So there are a couple of terms that you need to learn over here, guys. One is non-CDB. That means it's a non-container database. So if you remember the installation that we have done earlier, the Oracle database, sorry, when we were trying to create a database. So we have already installed Oracle 12C R2, right? And using DBCA, when we were creating our test database, if you remember initially, we unchecked the container database option, right? So that means in 12C, you are not forced to create a container database. You can choose to run the 12C database as a normal database, how 11G or 10G databases used to work. It will work perfectly fine. One thing to remember guys, if you created a database as non-container database, you cannot convert it into a container database. All right, of course you can make this as a pluggable database separately. But if you just say, hey, uh, the test database that I created as non-CDB, now I want to convert it into CDB. That's not possible, at least in uh, our current versions. And then there comes this database, which is known as CDB. CDB is a container database. Now this CDB has a couple of things. So it's a big container which can host multiple other databases. I repeat. So this is CDB and we call it as root. I mean, this is how we, uh, this is how the naming convention of the container database is inside the database. And you can't change this naming convention, CDB dollar root. So this container database, when you try to ins or create a new database using DBCA, a container database will be created. And on top of this container database, you create multiple other databases. So what you can do is you can create an HR database, you can create a sales database, you can create an SAP database. Now these databases are called as pluggable databases, PDB, all right? And when you create a container database, there is always a seed PDB that is by default created, PDB dollar seed. Now what is this seed PDB? This is a little important, but I think once you get hands on then you won't even need to uh, kind of like put more stress on understanding what is PDB dollar seed. It's a template pluggable database. Sorry, it's a template pluggable database that is supplied by Oracle. So anytime when you create a container database, by default, you will get PDB seed. Why? Because let's take you want to create a new PDB inside the database. What Oracle will do is Oracle will copy it from the seed. Technically, it's up to you. If you want to create a PDB pluggable database, you can copy it. There are multiple ways. Okay. So I'll, I'll uh, write it down over here, how to create PDBs. So how do we create the pluggable databases on a container database? And guys, if your database is CDB, then only you can create PDBs. Otherwise you won't be able to create PDBs on a non CDB database. So how to create PDBs? The simple way is to copy from seed PDB. So this seed PDB, you need not worry. It's a template which is given by Oracle. Whenever you create a CDB or a container database, you will get a seed PDB by default inside it. And then what you can do is copy from another PDB. So what you can do is let's take you want to create a, this new PDB. You can clone another PDB right into the same container. That's the beauty. Now, one thing I'll tell you guys, the beauty about the pluggable 
or multi-tenant architecture is the DB cloning is reduced to one line or one command. So you need not have to do all arm and backup, restore, recover, duplicate database, nothing. Just one command and you will be cloning a PDB database to a new database. Like somebody asked me this question, can we create or can we use a physical standby for uh, reporting database? Of course, we can definitely kind of like create workarounds to do that. But in this kind of case, or if you're using multi-tenant architecture, what you can do is you have a sales PDB, you create a reporting RPT PDB. And this PDB you open only as read only. So this way, what you have done is with one single command, you have cloned a PDB or a pluggable database, and then you have opened it as read only mode that allows you to uh, create a reporting database. So don't worry, we are going to come back to these concepts again. What all can you do with pluggable databases and all? So you can copy from seed PDB, you can copy from another PDB, you can copy from remote PDB. That means let's take if you have another container database and you have multiple PDBs that are on top of that container database, you can perform a remote cloning also. Sorry, it should be over here. And that is also, these all are one line commands guys. That's the beauty about the multi-tenant architecture. So copy from remote PDB and you can also do this. Uh, copy non CDB as PDB. That is also possible. Let's take you have a standalone database and this is like your 12 CR2 and this is non CDB, okay? You can actually pick this database and kind of like create a PDB in your environment. So that way, what you're trying to do is you are trying to consolidate your entire environment where you have one big root container and on top of the root container, you have multiple pluggable databases, right? So don't worry, we'll be looking at how do we create the PDBs. But before I jump on to next critical topic, let me know if you have any questions over here. So the next important thing we need to understand is what is PDB? And what it can do? Because a lot of people or a lot of online resources, they speak a lot about PDB, CDB and all. CDB, we understand it is a big container on which you can have multiple databases. But the important thing we need to understand what PDB can do. So a PDB, let's take this as a container database, right? This is CDB dollar root. Now this PDB over here, like HR PDB, okay, this is a PDB. This PDB for the outside world, it's a normal database. So which means when we say normal database, you as a database admin, you can normal, you can shut down the database as a normal database. You can start up the database as a normal database. You can create users like normal database. You can create table spaces like normal database. You can generate specific AWR reports, again, specific to one particular PDB as a DBA. So technically all the PDBs inside a container, they are completely isolated from each other. So it doesn't mean that if you as a DBA, if you have the privilege to access the HR PDB, you can have access to the other PDBs. No, it doesn't work like that. So each PDB is highly secure until unless you are a CDB or container database admin, you cannot access the PDBs. There are a lot of permission levels that have been changes, changed in the multi-tenant architecture. And because of those changes, 
even the role and privileges are defined differently in this multi tenant architecture so what are the roles so what are the main roles that have been changed see in a normal database non cdb what are the different types of users we know that there is a dba user and we know that there will be all normal users right but in this kind of multi tenant architecture we have again one more layer of uh, users and those users are known as cdb admin these are the people or these are the users who are responsible to administer the entire container so what they can do is they can clone a pdb they can shut down a pdb they can create a new pdb they can delete a pdb they can configure a pdb they can provide access to a pdb they can take backup of the pdb they can restore a pdb so the cdb the container database admin is the person who can play around with the entire container so this is like the main sys user that we used to have in the uh, non cdb database right the sys db role kind of like the superpower now if i say that each pdb seems to be like a normal database to the outside world so does it mean that it also has a sys dba role yes 100% so each pdb as like a normal cdb they also has uh, like sys dba users so these sys dba users are the admins who are responsible to administer only the pdb so the second layer of user or the uh, yeah second type of users that we have inside a multi tenant architecture are they are pdb admins so what you can do is you can create multiple pdb admins who are responsible to administer only that particular database they are not responsible to administer other databases right and of course in each database we always have normal users so that means each pdp will have their own normal users so these normal users are your application user these are the people who connect to your particular database so this is like the pdb level how it looks to the outside world the outside world when it is connecting to the database it cannot really tell uh, whether it is a pdb or it's a normal database until unless the pdb admin can run some queries and tell that okay this is a uh, container database or pdb <clears throat> so guys any questions on this part of course we are just going through the overview and architecture now and slowly once we start installing then you <clears throat> how does the listener architecture looks like in this setup you have to wait for the topic <laughs>